Well, good to be with you again this week as we continue our walk through the Word. Uh, today, uh, about 5.30 this morning, I got up and went for a walk. I don't normally get up that early and go for a walk, but I was up and thought I'd do it. And I was praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues as I was walking around this big old lake out by our house. And then the Lord just dropped into my spirit what we're going to talk about today. And I think uh, this will be beneficial to many of you because you're going through some stuff and God wants you to know that he has the answer for you. First of all, get out your Bible, take some uh, notes uh, if you can. Uh, I think it'll be beneficial for you and also you may want to present this to somebody else. Um, open your Bible to 1 John, I'm sorry, to the Gospel of John. And starting with verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Now skip down to uh, verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Most of you know that's talking about Jesus. Isn't that something? The Holy Spirit, who really wrote this, John was the tool, but it was the Holy Spirit speaking through John. Isn't it something that he would call Jesus the Word? That's why I tell people, if you read the Word, talking about the Bible, you're spending time with Jesus, because Jesus and the Word are one and the same. Amen? Now, look over at Psalm 107. So remember, Jesus is the Word. Then Psalm 107. Verse 20. Talking about God the Father. He sent his word <laughs> and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. God sent his word. You could also write in there Jesus. God sent Jesus and healed them. God sent Jesus to heal you. He sent Jesus to heal you of your sin problem. He sent Jesus to heal you of your depression. He sent Jesus to heal you of all the hangups you have. He sent Jesus to heal you of the flu, cancer, arthritis, autism, AIDS, whatever it is. God sent Jesus to heal you and to deliver you from your destructions. Remember, we talked a few weeks ago in John 10, uh, 10, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. And you can't have the abundant life if you're racked with sickness and disease and pain. That's not the abundant life. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to yourself with some religious, uh, I'm suffering for Jesus. That's not true. That's the devil that put that on you. And Jesus came to heal you. Remember, Jesus is the Word, and God sent His Word to heal them. Are you with them? I'm with them. Hallelujah. Now look over Proverbs chapter 4. It's uh, just to the right of Psalms. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. And the Hebrew word there for health is marpe, and it means uh, health, but it also means uh, medicine. So the word is medicine to your sick body. 
That's why it's important to get the word in front of your eyes. Get it into your spirit. Uh, I, I tell people that are going through health challenges, find healing scriptures. And a lot of ministries, you can go onto their website and they, they'll have them all listed for you. Look them up in your Bible and confess them over yourself. Because the word is medicine to your body. Go to Matthew 8. Now, this is a story of a centurion who had a sick servant. And uh, he sent for Jesus to come heal a servant. Matthew 8, we'll just pick it up, verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. So Jesus was willing to go to the centurion's uh, quarters and heal his servant. But the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come unto my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Barely, barely, I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. And I say to you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And skip down to verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in the selfsame hour. What I want you to get from that is that the servant, or the centurion, was pointing out that, you know, he, he's a commander, and his servants, his, his uh, uh, servants do what he tells them to do. And he knew that Jesus' words were his servants. In other words, the words of Jesus were going to do exactly what Jesus said they would do. I'm going to tell you something. You may not believe it, but it's scriptural. You as a believer, Jesus Christ has given you the authority of his name to use his name to do what Jesus did. Secondly, when you speak the word out of your mouth, it has just as much power as when God spoke it because it's the same word. And so when you speak it out of faith, you're putting that word to work to do exactly what God said it would do. Are you hearing me? Your words are servants. You're either telling them to do faith, works, or works of doubt. But they're going to do whatever you tell them to do. So, so far, what have we seen? Jesus is the word. and God sent the word to heal thee, to heal you. Um, go to Proverbs 18, 12. Well, actually, I'll just quote it to you. Death and life are in the power of of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Many, right now, some of you may be watching this, have spoke death over your life, spoke death over your job, spoke death over your marriage, and you're wondering why everything's dying around you, because death and life are in the power of the tongue. So here's what I want to challenge you to do today. A, believe the word for what it says. Know that Jesus is the healer. He was the healer yesterday. He is the healer today. He will be the healer forever. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your words are your servants. And they're going to do what you command them to do, either by faith or doubt. So line your word up with the word. And speak life and not death. And expect life and not death. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. I love you. If you got anything out of this, hopefully I didn't muck it up too bad and uh, you were blessed by it. Let me know you watched and uh, I would love to uh, hear from you.
God bless you. Go to church this weekend. Read your Bible. Say your prayers. And remember, God loves you, and so do I. And if I don't see you around town, I'll see you in heaven.